Does length matter? Or is it more about the necessity of your complexity? Well, when we're talking about passwords, the answer to both questions is yes, possibly. So I want to talk today about passwords and password complexity and how we're doing passwords potentially wrong or the thoughts of passwords and doing them wrong. And this is going back to a little bit of things that I already knew, but now I've got some uh, recent data to prove it um, from an engagement where we had 7,200 or so passwords that we, we dumped out or hashes that we dumped out, I should say, and took those password hashes and tried cracking them. And we were pretty successful. Within a week, we were able to crack 70% of those passwords using basic rule sets, basic password lists, and just uh, general ideas, general ideas about how people work and complexity standards. So I want to go ahead and dive into that. We'll talk through it and we'll see what this looks like in a little bit more detail. So moving over to Microsoft Excel, which is high production quality, but honestly, the easiest way to show you this. So here on column A, we have hashes. Now these are all NTLM hashes. Here on column B, we have the cracked password and then the length of the password here on column C. Now this attack against these passwords was run using a 3090 graphics card. It is considered one of the top of the line graphics cards, but it is a single graphics card. You have cracking rigs out there that will have multiple graphics cards and they can chain them together and they can do some insane password cracking. So with this, I ran this attack against the initial 7,200 passwords and that attack ran for five hours. Now in those five hours, we cracked all of these passwords here in this list. So the longest one that we cracked here was a 19 character password. Actually, we have two 19 character passwords. And then they just kind of go down the list, 18, 17, 16. And this is concerning because when we think about passwords and we think about, I don't know, anything that we go online and they say, hey, you need to have a long password and you should have a long password with a capital letter, a lowercase letter, a, a number and a special character. OK, well, look at this one right here. We have a capital letter. We have lowercase letters. We have a number and we have a special character. 19 characters cracked okay does not matter great length on this great policy meets the policy still got cracked okay so well we fall into a mindset here we fall into a mindset of using dictionary words which i consider to be the kryptonite of a good password we fall into the mindset often of hey i'm going to have a capital letter at the front I'm going to have a number at the end, and then I'm going to have a special character at the very, very end. So here's where we're seeing that. We're not seeing it here, but we're seeing it a lot. OK, seeing it here. And in this password policy of this company, obviously, it looked like they did not require special characters, which led to more cracking as well. With this in mind, we have the issue of these passwords getting cracked, mainly because of the dictionary words that they are using. You can see most of these are common dictionary words. So with this, we cracked all these passwords. It's like 4,500 in this list. I want to show you the passwords that attempts that we made to crack afterwards, talk about the reasoning we did this and why this becomes important when it gets into complexity. And we'll close out and it all makes sense. So keep this in mind, 19 characters. Moving over, I then ran an attack, which is a brute force attack. This first attack was called a rainbow table attack. Basically, we're taking this password, we're using a word list. I can add in what's called rule sets to this to kind of modify or mutate certain things within that word list to make different attempts. We're going through those. We're trying billions and billions and billions of possibilities. And we're going through and we're trying to see um, if we can actually come through here. Actually, I think this password list, when I ran it with the rule set, was like a quadrillion possibilities or something crazy like that. So we're doing a lot of uh, hash attempts at one time. So when we come through here, we're using this. We're trying to basically put this back into a hash format and match it with this hash. If it matches, we know this password is correct. And then we've cracked that password here. We're doing what's called a brute force attack. So this changes things up a little bit. We are taking eight characters minimum and we're going through and literally just brute forcing every single character. This could be a capital letter, lowercase letter, special character, number, doesn't matter. 
Every single position is going to try every single possibility within an eight character range. This here took almost two days. Now, this took almost two days on a 3090. If somebody had a really good cracking rig, they could probably get this down um, a lot shorter. Now, I've actually heard out of Berkeley, I believe, somewhere has a supercomputer that can now crack 14 character um, brute forces really, really fast. So keep that in mind. No password is really safe but we'll talk about ideas and strategies here. So with this list, running it across two days with my, my rig, uh, we have 130 cracks, pretty good. These were all passwords that did not crack in the initial, uh, initial set here. So the five hour attempt, the first sweep didn't crack, including eight character passwords. Why, why did these passwords not crack? Well, look at them, they're different. Most of these are kind of jumbled, they're not really, they still have, look, they still have some issues. They still have capital letter at the beginning. They still have uh, numbers and then uh, looks like special character at the end. We're still humans. We still make these mistakes, but they are a lot more complex. They're more jumbled up. They don't make sense. They're like initials and looks like different sort of things in here, except for final number four um, and maybe Bob in here and some of these other ones. But for the most part, they're kind of jumbled up. These are okay passwords. They didn't crack initially, literally had to go brute force them. On a dictionary attack against these, these would not crack. And that is something to point out. These are these are better passwords, in my opinion, than these passwords here. And these are eight character versus 19. Now we move into nine. Now at nine password, at the length of nine, for me to crack this with my rig, it would have took 242 days to go through all potential possibilities. I wasn't gonna do that. So what I did was I ran a few guessing attacks. And we'll start down here because this is actually where um, I started having some progress. Take a capital letter. We know people. People is what's in mind. Capital letter. Maybe a couple lowercase letters afterwards. And then add a special character at the end. In between can be whatever character possibility we want because who knows. And then you start getting some jumbled passwords again, but you still have numbers, a special character at the end. And we still go on to crack another 40 passwords in... I don't know, in seven hours on this one. So this was one of those attacks where, hey, again, I'm cracking these passwords only because they're they're taking the concept of thinking like a human and being able to crack these. So as we start progressively getting longer, yes, passwords become harder to crack. That is uh, mathematical there. The issue, again, comes back to dictionary words. So we start saying, okay, well, then what is a good password? If we have to have a password, now this is getting into the concept where people will start yelling at me about, well, it's about the hash, it's about the salt, um, you know, there are, there are no password options now or, or enable multi-factor. Yeah, I get all of that, okay? But we're not there as a society yet. A lot of places still require passwords. So if we have passwords, what can we do? What can we do to protect ourselves here? Well, first things first, if you're gonna have a password, the longer the better is true if you're going to also make it complex. So keep that in mind. The longer the better is true if you're also going to make it complex. Now, we can generate a quick 14 character password by doing some random, just like, I don't know if this is 14 characters or not, but just random something like this here. I don't know what the length that is. But with this in mind, this is a decent password. Probably not cracking this ever. I can run this through a word list, can run this through anything, not cracking it. What sucks about this password? Well, how are you gonna remember this? This is probably pretty difficult to remember, okay? Um, the, the more complex it gets, the, the more our human brains go, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm stumped here. So you have other options. You can do dictionary words. You can say like, I like long walks on the beach at around 5 p.m. And then you could still add your exclamations, whatever, at the end. In this password here, not getting cracked. I like long walks on the beach at around 5 p.m. Okay, add some capital letters in there, throw it around. Nobody's cracking this password, just plain and simple. So you could still have your dictionary words if as a human, you wanna think like that. The other alternative is what I consider misspellings, intentional misspellings. So something like if you had pepperoni pizza uh, 2021, that's a password that I would likely crack. But if you start doing like pepperoni, uh, something like this, pepperoni and then pizza, 
This is still going to be harder to crack than the other one. You start adding in like, I don't know, something like this, pepperoni, pizza. This is going to be way harder to crack, okay? Um, as you get into the lead speak. Now, I still don't recommend this, but it's still better than it's still better than this, okay? Um, at a significantly less length here, or it might be similar actually. But this is a stronger password than the longest cracked password there. So with that in mind, my big recommendation is using something like a password manager. Now, password manager such as Bitwarden. Now I have no affiliation with Bitwarden. This is not a paid promotion. This is me saying I like Bitwarden. And why do I like Bitwarden? Mainly because of this part right here where it says, hey, we're open source. What does that mean? That means they're transparent. You can go read their source code and they will uh, provide it to you. You can go look for bugs in it. And that means by community, we can all look for bugs in this platform. And I feel a lot safer when something is open source. Now you can go through the platform. What it does is if you've never used a password manager, this will store your passwords. You can use it to generate. You can see a little generator right here, generate passwords. It's a nice feature. Go in there and generate some passwords, um, add complexity, and it'll store all your passwords. Me personally, I don't know majority of the passwords. I know my password for my um, my Bitwarden and that's about it. Okay, now this does bring into the point of single point of failure, which is true. We have to pick our battles. Do we want um, the same password being used every single place? And that almost becomes a single point of failure as well. If you have uh, the same password being used on your Amazon, on your Facebook, on your GitHub, like they're showing here, or do you want three different passwords there, but somebody ever gets your point of failure for your uh, Bitwarden, then, or you get your password for your Bitwarden, then yeah, you've lost all those. Which then brings me to the other concept, which many of you, if you're security minded, are probably screaming in your head. Enable two-factor authentication. Enable multi-factor authentication have something out there that prevents you if your account gets attacked have something out there that prevents you from just letting them log right in now this could be an authenticator app like the google authenticator app it could be something like sms which as security minded folks we don't like to recommend but sms based multi-factor or two-factor is still better than no multi-factor or two-factor so um keep in mind strong passwords Length does matter, but complexity does matter. Combination of the two is even better. Uh, get away from the dictionary words would help you out tremendously from me hacking your passwords. Doesn't matter if you're meeting policy. Doesn't matter if you have a 19 character password. If it has dictionary, if it has no complexity, then we are looking at some problems for you from a hacker perspective. Good day for me. Now, with that in mind, using something like multi-factor authentication, two-factor authentication, great concept, password managers, great concept. This will prevent a lot of the issues out there that we are seeing and stop uh, somebody like me in my tracks or even better, somebody that's actually out there to get you maliciously in their tracks. So that is it for this video. Hopefully you understood, you enjoyed the concepts. I highly recommend checking out password managers, highly recommend enabling 2FA, MFA, and keeping yourself safe online as technology gets better, as hackers improve, as um, it becomes easier and easier to crack a password, you need to keep yourself safe. So that's it for this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button. Please do consider subscribing. Half of you that watch these videos still aren't subscribed. We'd love to have you here as a subscriber. Hit the bell and then comment down below if you have any ideas for a video you would like to see in the future. Until then, my name is the Cyber Mentor, and I do thank you for joining me. Peace out.